Hi, welcome to my video blog, um, also known as a vlog, I think. This is something new to me, but I thought this might be a really cool way to present some material on a blog. I know that uh, YouTube is a really popular place. I doubt I'm going to make any money on these uh, educational blogs, but um, I really do believe that part of learning is teaching, so I'm going to uh, try to teach you guys about learning theories and uh, for the learning theories that we've reviewed in this course with a special emphasis on what's called connectivism. I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, the four learning theories, which is behaviorism, uh, cognitivism, constructivism, and connectivism. So those are the four learning theories I'm going to discuss today. Right, we're going to start with behaviorism. This is one of the oldest ones. It's really about um, the human being or the learner being a blank slate. And, it's, and they are shaped by stimuli, both positive and negative. It's kind of like uh, uh, the, the rat who wants to get the piece of cheese and it pulls the lever. So we have a little picture of that rat right there. Um, and people learning through repetition. Uh, th that's also one of the hallmarks of behaviorism. I want to touch on Pavlov's dogs. Some of you guys may know this, uh, this experiment that was done in the early parts of the 20th century where Pavlov, who was a researcher, an experimenter, uh, rang a bell and then would give the dog a treat and then the dog would eat the treat. And after a while, every time he rang the bell, the dog's mouth would water. And that is, uh, that's called conditioning. And that's one of the foundations of behaviorism. Um, I'm going to move on now to cognitivism, which is, uh, which is a little bit more complex, but I, I think that they are connected. So cognitivism is a theory that was in response to behaviorism. A lot of psychologists um, really didn't get on board with the idea of that human beings are just like a rat or an animal. Uh, and they really want to promote this idea that um, we are more complex and it, we needed to explain cognition itself. Um, in this theory, the mind is an information processor. Um, it emphasizes the concept as a whole instead of just the pieces. So you're really trying to understand uh, the whole idea uh, and, the, and the concept. I was really taught this theory uh, and un it, unknown, unbeknownst to me because uh, when I read about cognitivism, I realized oh, this is so much like Bloom's taxonomy, which was the foundation of my education in e-learning. And uh, and I still use a lot of his strategies, but I, I do feel like there's actually a mix. I don't think that there's only one way to uh, teach and, and there's only one way to learn. But uh, um, I do feel that cognitivism was, was my foundation, at least. Um, some of these examples of cognitivist strategies um, for higher, higher level thinking are, for example, uh, you starting a lesson with a hook to, to create interest in in the in the learning product or, or whatever the concept you're trying to learn so you hook the learner in uh, with something interesting and you start with a review quiz that's going to promote prior learning and you're going to have very well organized learning content using uh, learning outcomes chunking content to bite-sized pieces using graphic organizers and the, re the student really takes on an active role in learning but the teacher is also there uh, to teach and to, and to guide the students into what needs to be learned. Uh, also, the teacher is, give, gives a lot of encouragement and positive feedback within uh, cognitivism. So this is a theory that I think that um, most schools do adhere to right now. Constructivism is another theory, and it really prom promotes students learning new things through experience on their own. They build knowledge through experience and interaction. Uh, that, that's pretty much what it, what it is. And you see here uh, in this picture, these students are give, given these like building blocks or some putty maybe to, to stick them together. And, and I like to think in this picture, they were just give, given this, this, these blocks. They weren't given really very much instruction. So the teachers there uh, more as a guide, but not really telling students exactly what to do. It's, it's about self-discovery. I feel like the high school I attended, which is kind of a progressive high school in San Francisco called Urban School of San Francisco, they um, use a lot of constructivist ideas. I do believe that. Uh, one of the major differences in between cognitivism and constructivism, uh, in, cog in con cognitivism, the students are, encouraged, uh, are taught to do something and they build on uh, prior knowledge, whereas in constructivism, the students are encouraged to discover something on their own, and the learning is very much self-directed. 
another major difference is that in cognitivism, learning is about building on prior knowledge, and constructivism is about building new ideas and concepts based on your own discovery. So I think I, I, uh, re I reiterate that. All right, so lastly, we move on to connectivism. Connectivism is a really rather new learning theory. It was developed uh, by George Siemens and Stephen Downs. It, uh, it stresses the connections and what's called a co uh, combinatorial creativity. So it's about bringing people together through connections. And it was really a theory developed uh, in the era of the World Wide Web, of the internet. And the uh, previous three, behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism, were all developed prior to the advent of the internet. And George Seaman theory takes into account uh, learning trends and, and technology and networks and also di the, the diminishing half-life of knowledge. So he really thinks about um, knowledge itself and how relevant it is and what, um, wh how long is that knowledge going to be useful. And with the advent of the internet, there's new information, new knowledge coming out all the time. And he feels that connectivism and through the use of networks, they're able to uh, keep the uh, keep the half life of knowledge to a minimum. Uh, the learning community is described as a node within connectivism, and the and when two or more nodes come together, it creates the network. And then through the network, you connect many people, so it's a it's a collaborative or mass intelligence. I'll give you an example. Let's say a student is uh, trying to learn something new. For example, um, uh, a student is researching how Trump came to power. He's very confused about this. And he maybe he starts on Facebook. And a friend posts some article about, uh, about Donald Trump. He, it then takes him to this article. And the, the article text is really dense. He kind of gets an idea about it, but it's still confusing. Uh, the student then scrolls down to the comment sections and finds a link to a blog. Uh, the student finds the blog, and embedded within that blog is a YouTube video about Donald Trump and his rise to power. And he watches the video, and he more fully understands the issue. The student just used various forms of gathering information using the internet, and has gleaned the most salient information. And the use of, uh, of those many different modes of learning, uh, he or she, or the student, has more fully understood the issue. So what we're looking at is bringing together many people, many different ideas, using different modes of learning, you know, text, blogs, video. And its, um, this, its outcome is actually just as strong as any of the other learning theories, and maybe even stronger based on what Siemens talks about. So that's my, um, that's my uh, presentation on the four different learning theories. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Let me know in the comments if, uh, if you agree or disagree with what I've talked about. I, I feel that connectivism is a very interesting learning theory that, uh, that has a lot of relevance in the 21st century.